Okay, whoa, awkward. Hey there guys, Winnie here and welcome back to Let's Play Super Mario Sunshine! When last we met, we uh, oh, sorry, we were doing um, the secret, the secret shines and getting the hundred coins and all the blue coins. Basically, doing a full sweep on all the worlds, getting a hundred percent on all of them. And uh, if you guys, um, couldn't already figure it out by now, this is actually post-commentated. I know, I hide it really well, don't I? Um, I'm not actually currently playing, if you don't know what post-commentate means, I'm actually... I played this previously and I'm now recording my voice uh, separately and watching it and editing. So I'm basically watching the finished product, narrating over it, and that's what I'll be... Uh, well, look at you suck, dude. And that's <laughs> what this video is, but enough of basically explaining what post-commentating means. Um, so yeah, you have your usual in this world, this gelato beach. Um, thankfully though, we already collected one of the secret uh, stars in this world, if you remember that, or one of the secret shines, uh, where you do that staircase, over by the staircase where you go up to the higher part of the level to get like access to the sandbird. There's a little sprout up on that uh, upper area where you can spray it and it leads down to a staircase down to a wall with some coins and if you spray the wall uh, a shine appears and a shine pops out of it and you grab it and it's the Yankee Doodle Dandy basically. So your second one or what should be your first one is basically doing the secret here uh, except doing it um dude you suck! Uh, <laughs> except the usual uh, thing of, you know, you have a time limit and you have to collect the red coins, so I kind of failed pretty hard there, but I think I get it this time. Nope. <laughs> wow, I suck. Um, I remember when I was recording this, I literally stopped and said to myself, dude, slow down, who are you trying to impress? So, you'll see me taking this a lot slower. And I had it that, uh, that second time that I did it, but uh, as you saw I fell off the side and then I realized I didn't have my hover nozzle equipped. I had it on spray mode and I was like, well, shit, that's useless. And as of recording this, I think I only have Noki Bay and Pianta Village left to uh, do secret shines, 100 coins, and blue coins, and let me tell you, I've already encountered some ones that make me want to tear my hair out. I haven't even done the Chucksters yet, but I'm not looking forward to it. I've got plenty of time. There we go. Finally, dude. Holy cow. Sorry, I had my hand in front of my mouth right there. I was scratching my eye and talking at the same time. I realize that's not very smart. Did you see my mouse cursor there? Yeah, it'll make some, uh, it'll make a few appearances. <laughs> Such as right there. <laughs> so, going on, front, for onward and upward. Uh, episode 8 is your best selection for getting a hundred coins. Um, and I say this because, uh, well, unfortunately there is not a whole lot of coins that are easily accessible in the other episodes. Um, it's one of those worlds that you might look at and go like, man, coins are kind of scarce once you actually step back and look at it. Uh, but grab these ones on top of the trees, that all is fine and wonderful, gets you a good amount. But what really matters is, uh, is when you're, um, is that you do it on the Watermelon Festival one because you want the opportunity to turn in, uh, watermelons. And... I looked up a guide somewhere online, there's a blue coin for you guys, um, I looked up a guide somewhere online and it was saying something about like, oh well, um, 
All you gotta do is smash watermelons against walls for a little bit. And I was like, mm, I don't know if I believe that. And I think I did an original take where I actually tried to do that. And it didn't go over too well, because in the end, as it turns out, that is an extremely slow and painful way of doing this. So, I don't recommend it at all. And actually, actually, who helped me was I went back to the very person who got me into Let's Playing, which was Nintendo Capri Sun. And he did an LP of this game a long time ago, and I looked up how he did 100 coins in this game, or in this world. And, uh, again, he chose episode 8, and he said and showed that the best way to do it is to just find all the small watermelons around the island, or around the area, and turn them in, because you're not getting a shine out of it, but you do get a buttload of coins, as we'll see later. So, that's the best way of doing it, then, you know, your standard what I'm doing right now, falling off a palm tree a hundred times just because, you know, those delicious four coins are worth it oh so much. Like, who thought getting on top of this tree would be so goddamn painful, but it is. See, so now I'm like super careful about it. I'm like, no way am I falling off again. So I jump in the water down here, I guess, because I think there's a blue coin that I'm after, but I'm not sure. Oh yeah, I am. See it over there? And this is all good because this saves me time uh, in the blue coin montage at the end of the episode. I think that's how I'm going to do it from now on. I'm going to... All of these from here on out, uh, all of the kind of, you know, cleaning up extra stuff in all the world episodes are all going to be done post-commentated and are all the blue coin it's all going to be condensed into one episode and the blue coins at the end are going to be uh, uh, a montage basically kind of quick cuts of where the ones are that I missed Another blue coin down there for you. There's three in total right there that we accidentally collected in lieu of doing 100 coins. Twenty-four, not a bad number, but we haven't turned in any watermelons. And each of these guys on the beach, each one of them gives you a coin for bouncing on them. Unfortunately, I missed out on this coin because this asshole just happened to have it land right inside of him. And I can't go near them once they're on the ground without bouncing, so... Couldn't get that one. But yeah, you can definitely clear out sections of the beach. You don't have to like try to go like, Oh, I can't remember which one I've stepped on. You know, don't get caught up in that kind of mentality with it. Just do, you know, like, each area one at a time. These guys are a pain in the ass. I forgot if I break this watermelon. Yep, I do. Oh well. And when you're escorting these watermelons back, each one that you break is an extra coin, so... You know. Don't get too, uh, down in the dumps about it if you break one. That's another thing that that guide suggested. It was like, you can get 10 coins out of each watermelon for breaking it. So I guess essentially what that guy that I was talking, that I'm talking about, what I wanted you to do was break each watermelon individually 10 times and then turn it in. Like, what an unnecessary waste of time. I don't know why it made that noise. See, and you get a big old heaping pile of coins for every time you turn on a watermelon. I think they gave us 10 right there. I think you get more uh, for each watermelon you turn in. I remember that was one that I didn't do yet. Oh, 
There's another watermelon over here. Long story short, getting to 100 coins in this world is easier than you think, but time consuming. And oh my god, don't even get me started on uh, Hotel Delfino. Oh boy, when when you guys finally see me getting 100 coins on that, it's not fun. I think that is easily so far, so far because I haven't done the last two worlds, that is so far the hardest world to get 100 coins on. I think it's a Sirena Beach, right? Yeah. It's just, it's, uh, it's such a pain in the butt. I think he's gonna give us a little bit more coins this time. Also, we end up with 51. Oh no, I guess you get 10 for each watermelon you're turning. That's still a whopping 20 right there, that's fine. One fifth of the way. I think towards the end of this, I do start to kind of teeter off and try to figure out, uh, um, like I start uh, getting strained for coins, like I'm kind of hunting around and like nooks and crannies for them. Just trying certain things, seeing if it works. Oh no, I remember how this ends. Yeah, never mind. Yes. Essentially, once I get around like 90, I run out and I seriously cannot think of any more. A lot of these markings on the walls I'm saving for the uh, blue coin segment, which I shouldn't have been. I should have been doing them when I see them. It would have saved me uh, quite a bit of editing time. Oh boy. So it begins. I think the official name for these bad guys, well, these bad guys, god, I sound like a fifth grader talking about his favorite video game. Uh, I think the official name for these enemies is Cataquax, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't know why that just popped into my head. I was like, these things are called Cataquax. If they aren't called Cataquax, then Nintendo, please hire me because clearly I've thought of a great name for your enemy designs. And as you saw down there, that is where we got the uh, second secret shine. I'm glad I showed that at some point. I forgot if I did. I was kind of worried that I wouldn't. Missed my coin. Missed my coin. blue coin and I see this blue cataclack over here and I'm just like what the heck is that guy doing like first off why is he blue and why is he up in a tree like I didn't I guess I just don't understand but then you spray him and you step on him he gives you a blue coin instead of a yellow one so how cool is that accidentally discovering blue coins one of my favorite things that's happened throughout this LP because always saves me more a little bit more work in the end. Speaking of cataquacks, I hate cataquacks. They're such a dicks. So I figure I need ten more. And I can't turn in the big watermelon because he'll give me a shine for that. He won't give you coins, I don't think. So then I'm like, well, I guess I can go coin hunting. A bit. Figure out the lay of the land.
very odd that they have all these strings out here. It's just, just kind of out of place. I see a blue coin down here that I try to go for, but I fall. Thankfully, though, it's a fairly shallow cliff there, so you can just jump right back up if you have turbo nozzle. This is me wildly jumping around. Oh my god. I'm now. Oh. I was gonna say, this is me wildly jumping around figuring out how to get these two coins without falling. I gave up on it, as you see, but I think I go back to it because I realize now, at this point in the game, two coins is pretty significant when counting to ten rather than a hundred. Man, just getting a hundred coins in this world was so frustrating. It was not the bee's knees. It was not the bee's knees! I'm sorry, y'all. Stretching my back there. That's why it sounded like I was just suddenly dying or turning into something that is awful. These coins out here, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know. Try to save myself, but nope, you suck. At this point, I was like, I just, I so want to give up. I just, I don't want to be doing this. And then, uh, something in my mind told me just, you know, that moral compass of don't give up kind of was ringing true, so I was like, oh, fine, I'll go back up. Almost. Too bad you suck. So then... What's my new strategy? Finally, there's some coins and a blue coin. Now those coins leading out there, I assume you need your natural hover nozzle and then you just kind of float down, but I don't know. I thought maybe you need a rocket nozzle, but I didn't even go off in the right direction, so it doesn't even matter. See, I'm kind of hunting around for any lost coins that I might not have grabbed that just don't stand out or that you have to spray something specific for. And I'm sure I'm walking by like a hundred of them right now, but <coughs> I don't know at the time. I just couldn't uh, think of any more to grab. I only needed four or more, you know. Yoshi thing, if I had Yoshi, but I don't think Yoshi appears in this episode. Oh wait, no, he does, right? It's episode 8. Or does he only appear in like episode 6 or something? I don't remember. Either way. So back up here, I guess my thought process was, hey, breaking a watermelon four times can't be that long or arduous of a task, can it? And then I get distracted. <laughs> because I'm like, oh man, I gotta get these bluebirds while I'm up here, right? 
And maybe even get these green ones so I can get some coins. And I don't even grab the coins, I think. I look at it way out there and I'm like, it's not worth it. So I'm gonna climb all the way back up if I slide off the side of the thing. Blue coins, those are worth it. Save me some headache having to do this at a more crucial moment. Bluebird flying away. Cause you suck, man. And finally, finally, the blue, or er, the blue, <laughs> the coin star, which goes all the way out there for some reason. I don't know why. They're crazy, man. And there we go. There's the blue coin from the bird. Done and done, right? Well, not really. I could probably edit this better. I could have cut out a lot of the, uh, just random stuff. Hmm. Oh well. <laughs> oh well. Alright. Let's initiate blue coin montage. So. First episode that we missed some from is episode one. How fitting, right? Starting out where we began. This red cataquack, the only one on the beach, stomp him for a blue coin. And then way out here in the water, we saw this one kind of in the hundred coins challenge, or when we were getting the hundred coin shine. Um, just way out there, even farther out in this direction. Uh, near the coral reef towards Pina Park, you'll find another one. And this one's way out there, so uh, trust me, you never know it was there otherwise. Um, now for the two red triangles that we see in uh, this uh, world. Essentially, what you got to do is you have to water slide to get there in time. Otherwise, I don't think there's any other way to make it. <laughs> So just do the exact same for the other side of the triangle. Go right back to where you were. Perfect. Mm, way up here you'll find one. It's on this uh, kind of... Uh, well, it's up on the string up here, but... When I came up here, I was like, I don't even, I didn't even know the thing was up there. Like, for some reason, that pole has never like struck me as like something I should remember that's there. But there is. There's one that's way higher up than the other ones, and my blue coin's right on top of it. And I keep spinning whenever I grab this damn thing. I just need to calm down, man. So I eventually figure out the button to stop swinging. There we go. Now it matters jumping high enough than hovering over it. Done and done. So over on the beach you will find in some random, or not random, but some pretty odd locations there's going to be three shine sprites on the beach here. And for each one that you spray fully and entirely uh, you get a blue coin out of them. There's three of them, so that totals up to three more blue coins. Ow! Scratch my back and I hurt. And that's all for episode one. Here we are, and I believe episode two, uh, where the sandcastle was in episode one, just spray that for a big shine and you'll get a blue coin out of it. So, episode three, I believe, here we come. Episode 4. Oh, right. The Sandbird. Okay. So, on the Sandbird, if you remember, there was that one coin that I missed on one of the clouds. So, I went back and grabbed that. Episode 6. The Coral Reef one. Um, over here, if you grab one of the fruits and you bring it over to the uh, watermelon hut, 
you'll find that the uh, actual blender on top of it is actually turned on, so you might be like, well, what do we do with this? Well, I'll take any random piece of fruit that you find, um, preferably not a durian, <laughs> um, and somehow get it up on the roof, make a side jump, and throw it in there. You get a blue coin. Um, so, secondary uh, on this one, on this world or episode, you grab a pineapple, and you're gonna try to grab Yoshi, but uh, this might be randomized, I don't know, so your Yoshi might not want a pineapple. Um, if he doesn't, then I'm sorry. <laughs> but mine did, so it was relatively easy. You're gonna grab Yoshi, sure. You're gonna go right over to that big yellow zigzag that we saw, uh, that's been there for a few worlds, or episodes now. And you're finally gonna get rid of it. And spray and see what lies in here. And it's a big old footprint with some coins and a blue coin. And now this beehive. What you're gonna want to do is spray down this beehive and then uh, be have your fingers ready. And you're gonna eat every single bee. one gives you your last blue coin. So that will be it for uh, Gelato Beach 100%. So thank you guys for watching. This has been your host, Sasha Wayne Neal. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.